And I imagine I have my investments on the books as other current assets. Once I start to add the investments, we're also going to have an issue of what happens when the investments go up in value. Usually the, the standard rule for generally accepted pr accounting principles is we don't adjust for the increases and decreases in the value because uh, they're temporary. We have not yet realized them. That's the, that's the rule we use for like equipment or property planting equipment because we use a depreciation method that allocates the cost over the time as opposed to trying to value the equipment over time. But if we invest, often the argument is if you invest in real estate, then the real estate might go up in value and you should be using, you know, fair market value is the argument. Now, the problem with fixed assets and trying to record them at fair market value is that we don't know what the fair market value is because it's just an estimate. And if you allow people to make estimates based on it, then they're probably going to start. That's an area where they can distort things and whatnot. But if you look at like investment accounts, they you can know pretty clearly what they're valued at at any given time. They might be over or undervalued on the market, but you do know what the market is currently trading them for if they are investments currently trading on an exchange. So that gives us the capacity to be a lot more sure about any given time what the value is, at least for that particular point in time, because other stocks are trading at the same value. So there's a better argument in my mind to say, okay, I am going to adjust my investments according to fluctuations in the market, possibly monthly, possibly quarterly. I'm not going to try to adjust it every day because again, I could use for just valuation purposes, I could use other software to do that, like a personal capital. And I can use the running charts within the actual, you know, my investment software. Here, I just want to adjust it periodically so I can see the snapshot and see it with everything else, as well as populate the income statement in accordance to those changes. Now, when we when we record an increase or decrease in the value of an investment, then the, the next question is, well, what are you going to record the other side as? Is it income, even though you haven't sold the inventory or you can put the other side into equity? I think most people would record it as income because it's the easiest thing to do. And so, and I would report it as other income kind of at the bottom of my income statement because it's not the main source of income that we'll be dealing with. So we'll get into some of those issues uh, shortly for now. So for now, let's say if you just start off your investment account, let's imagine there's a beginning balance in it. So I'm gonna go back on over to the tab to the left and the register I just set up is this Primerica. So I'm gonna imagine before we set up the bank feeds, there's already a beginning balance in this account. So I'm going to add, I'm going to, I could go into the register and add this. This is the same kind of beginning balance kind of situation you might have with the, the checking account. Uh, so I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to add, let's say a deposit type of transaction. I'll make it as of the day before we started the current year, which is, I'm going to say 12, 31, two, one, and I'm not going to put a payee. I'm just going to say, this is the beginning balance. And I'm going to say it's an increase of, let's say it was 10,000. I'm just making up a number here. The other side, I'm going to put into the equity owner's equity account. Now I'm putting it into owner's equity because it's not income. It shouldn't be on the income statement. It's also in the prior year. So it's before we started doing the income statement in the current time frame. So it's not going to really affect the income statement in the current time frame due to both of those kind of checks. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And so if I pull that over into my balance sheet, run it, then now we've got the investment account down here, Primerica on at 10,000. And I put it on there with a, with a deposit type of form in the prior period. So if I go back a day, then run it, boom. So there it is scrolling back up. And then the other side is going into the equity. So now we have it in the equity. I can't see the detail here, but you could run a GL account to see the detail. They don't let you kind of drill down on it because that's the that's the rollover account they use, kind of like the retained earnings account.